Good morning, everyone. My name is Teresa Sosha, and I'm the event supervisor for Grasp a Graph. So hopefully that is the intended event that you were calling into. Um, here we have up the rules, so you should already have a copy of the rules as um, part of setting up your team. They are, of course, on the website as well, but let's go over them in case there's any questions. The event itself is um, the challenges for the, the students to interpret and organize information that come from pictographs, pie graphs, bar and line graphs, and also Venn diagrams. So that's the scope of the graphs that we're expecting um, the students to be able to analyze. For the event, the students should bring a pencil. Um, they're allowed to bring a non-programmable calculator, though they really don't need it. Um, we will put the majority of, you know, if they're just adding or subtracting um, two, three-digit numbers, you know, they, they can still do that without a non-programmable calculator, but they are allowed to bring a non-programmable calculator. A ruler, and a ruler is very helpful to um, interpret a graph. You can put the ruler on the page and that helps you read across to an axis. The rule is, ruler is also helpful to draw a graph um, so that it's set up neatly and, um, and accurately and then colored pencils. So that's the equipment that they should bring. Um, no phones or scrap paper are allowed. We will allow them to tear apart the test and use the test as scrap paper so they can work on the test and, and write all over the test um, for, um, for doing any calculations or taking notes that they wanna do. Um, the team size, one student can finish in 30 minutes. Um, but certainly team size can have up to two students. I will let the students um, very quietly whisper to themselves. They'll sit in a table of two. Um, they can tear the test apart and work in parallel. So one student can start working on um, one section of the test and another student can work on the other section of the test or they can both do the test you know, at the same time together. It's really up to them, but you should know you have that option to for the students to split the test up. We talk about sections. Part one is going to be um, oh, about um, around 70 to 75 multiple choice questions. Um, And again, there'll be pictures of graphs in the specific types of graphs that I mentioned. And then there'll be a series of multiple choice questions to answer about each graph. Part two is the student will be given a uh, scenario and a set of data and then asked to actually graph that data it on a piece of graph paper. The graph paper will be given to them. It's half inch um, squares. That scale of graph paper is also available in the event information. So you can download that and, and as they're practicing, they can practice on the same scale graph paper as they'll be given the day of the test. And in this case, I'm only expecting the, the data set that I give that they either draw a bar graph or a line graph. So, so the scope is, is narrowed for the second part of the test. Um, students are only going to be given one piece of graph paper per team, so they need to know um, if they make a mistake, what they're going to do if they make a mistake, because they're only going to get that one piece of graph paper. Scoring-wise, um, the test, the part one is amounts to about 60%. And part two amounts to about 40% of the total score. Part one, um, the multiple choice answers need to be recorded on the zip create form. So even though they can write on the test, 
I'm not going to score the test or transfer um, answers from the test to the zip grade form. So that needs to be part of their time management is to record the answers on the zip grade form. And then of course the the graph paper will be graded. Um, okay. Um, we've got um, just tiebreakers in case the total score, there's any ties, then I'll look at part two, who scored better on part two first. And if there's additional ties, then we'll have some predetermined multiple choice questions that we will use as tiebreakers. Okay. All right. The next page, there we go. So here I have an example of how part one will look. There'll be a picture of a graph. In this case, it happens to be a Venn diagram with an explanation of, of, this, of the scenario. And then following will be multiple choice questions. So there's just one here, but in the test, there'll be, oh, anywhere from like one to seven questions following each graph. OK, next page. And this is an example of how part two will look. So there is a set of data and a little story to explain the set of data. And then it will be um, you'll be asked to graph that data on the graph paper. Additionally, there is um, anywhere from one to four questions on the same page that you will write in that um, like a fill in the blank, if you will. And so the idea would be you graph the data first and then the graph, your graph will help you answer those multiple choice questions. OK. Now here's the scoring rubric for the graph. We I look at a title being appropriate and well placed. Um, the graph must have a key. There will be always at least two sets of data, so a key is, is necessary. I'll look for an x-axis title, a y-axis title, um, data labels and units on both axes, even and appropriate intervals, neatness of the graph, set up and scale on the graph paper so it shouldn't be just you know in a, a tiny little quadrant of, of the graph paper they should space it out to use um, you know at least three quarters of the graph paper so they can set their scale up so that they can use more of the graph paper um, we'll look for the correct type of graph so depending on the question that gets asked or the type of data you're given a bar graph is what I'm looking for if there's discrete data given. And that example on the prior page with animals, those are things and things that are discrete data. If you're given um, measurements or temperatures that can change over time, then a line graph is the graph that I'm looking for. And then of course, each of the data points need to be placed appropriately on your graph. So I've got, uh, I think if we go to the next page, I've got some examples because this tends to be the more. So this is an example, of course, it's it's not hand drawn of, of what a graph would look like. So this happens to be a bar graph. You've got a title at the top that describes the data that you're going to look at. Um, so it's participation in summer camp activities girls and boys in 2018. So it's describing kind of more or less what you're going to see in the key. And then um, you've got the bars, of course, clearly in two different colors. That's why I suggest that they bring colored pencils. So they can use two different colors to designate the key easy. It's easier for them too as they're drawing the graph. Um, we've got a uh, y axis title here, number of kids. You've got intervals of 200 and they are consistent. Uh, mistake I see a lot is kids will start doing, like, say, tens and then they'll change to five and one. And so that's what we mean by even. That's a 
on the bottom here where the discrete data, we've got uh, the labels. So the first set of bars is swimming for the two sets of data. And then you've got activities, which is the um, X axis title itself. Uh, the next couple of pages I kind of highlight. So you have for reference what a what an axis title is in reference to this graph. What the data labels are. And then here, yep. And then here is a, a picture of an actual uh, student drawn graph that would score well. OK, now there are um, there is an example exam out there, so there's um, more multiple choice examples on on the event website. Um, and of course, those exam because it's a full exam, you'll see different types of graphs and questions that are being answered asked of. OK. Any questions? If you have any questions, you can ask it through the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Hi, right, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, this is Mr. Lambert from Plumbrook Elementary. And I've got a couple of questions. You mentioned 75 questions. Is that more than there has been in previous years? Yeah, I think that's I think um, I was incorrect. I think it was more like 75 points, two points for each question. So I think it's more in the, the 35 range. And you said uh, line graph or bar graph. Does that include a double bar and a double line? Yes, that's correct. And also, can there be three circles or more on the Venn diagram questions? Yes, I think I have um, done up to up to three circles. Yes. OK, thank you. Any other questions? I see uh, somebody has a hand up. Alvira, you have a hand up? Yeah. Or yes, I want to ask. I know you guys said that they only get one piece of the graph paper. They're also going to get one uh, zip grade sheet, right? So even if they split up the test and one person does 10 questions, another does 10, they will both need to combine their answers on the one zip grade sheet, right? Correct. And I've seen teams come up with different strategies. You know, they they'll if they do that, they might tran they'll they'll transfer later, right? They're both just circle answers on the graph and then transfer later, or one person will um do just the drawing of the graph while the other person's doing the multiple choice. Um, you know, so they they can kind of come up with whatever strategy they want. But yes, only one zip grade and only one piece of graph paper. OK, thank you. Tiffany, you have a question. You are next. Please unmute yourself. Hi, you um, kind of answered my question just a second ago, but I just want to confirm if we split it with a drawing, one kid does a drawing and one kid does the multiple choice. Is it enough time to do the multiple choice for one child? It is. Plenty of teams do that, right? You know, it depends on the child and and um, probably how familiar they are with the, you know, with the content, um, but it is definitely um, doable. It's doable for one person to do the test. OK, and it's what 30 minutes you said? Yeah, the event itself is scheduled for 30 minutes. I say okay. approximately because they're going to lose about one or two minutes for us to kick it off in the in the beginning. OK, thank you. Matumita, you have a question? Please unmute yeah. yourself. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have a question about is there any previous sample questions of previous years we can have access to other than the one we saw right now in the uh, slides so that 
we can coach the kids better or there are any books you would recommend? There is a, a there is an entire um, test on the event website. OK, thank you. And like a, a prior year's test. So there's uh, at least 30 to 40 questions out on that practice exam. Sure, thank you so and much. I, and I think in the backup of this presentation, there might be um, some sources of places to go get examples of graphs and be creative. Um, there used to be a magazine called um, Time Magazine for Kids. I don't know if it's even available anymore, but um, kids magazines will a lot of times have um, a graph. Um, the newspaper, there are tons of the USA Today in particular always has a small graph on the front page that's really basic. Um, you can make your own graphs, make up your own questions um, for them to practice. Um, textbooks, actually their history textbooks probably have more graphs than their math textbooks as far as examples go, but um, be creative. And I'm sure anymore, um, there's just more and more examples available on the internet as well. That's right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Brendan, you have a question. Please unmute yourself and ask the question. Uh, yes, good morning. So uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, the children need to know how to correct a mistake if it's made when uh, when doing the the graph at the end. Um, what what would be the appropriate way to correct a mistake if I mean, there's no erasers allowed unless I guess they're on the colored pencils, right? Oh, no, they sorry. OK, I guess I could add that. Yes, they can have a regular rubber eraser. Um, you know, the gum erasers versus the white ones may be better. Um, if it if I can clearly tell they erase that if I don't know if you if we go back to my sample graph, the student sample graph, Manish. Yes, one second. There is a mis you'll see a mistake on this one. Um, between 2008 and 2009, you can see they started to draw. But they they had obviously attempted to er erase it and, and that's fine, right? So they erased it. Um, you know, the best way for them not to make a mistake is for them to plan. So they should not start coloring in or drawing right until they've they've planned out the entire graph with a regular pencil because regular pencils are easier to erase. And then once they know they've got all their bars and labels in the right place, then they should come out with the colored pencils. The regular regular pencil is easier to erase. Does that help? Yeah, that helps. Appreciate it. Okay. Any other questions? If nobody else has a question, I'll uh, go ahead and stop recording. And we'll post this video on the Ocomeso <coughs> web page. So last call, anybody has questions? All right, I will go ahead and stop recording. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll see you around. Yes, good luck.